So last time, last time's lesson was about uh, the, the digestive tract of the cow, and today's lesson will be about the monogastric animals, their digestive tracts, such, such as the chicken, and we're also going to look at the pig. So this slide is just to show you what the inside of the chicken looks like. You don't have to memorize this slide specifically. It's just to show you that there are so many different organs and things packaged in a small chicken when you get them in various sizes. So in this picture, you can actually see the lungs, the cecum. Uh, the ovary, the pancreas, so many extra things, but we're just going to focus on the digestive tract, so mainly their stomachs and their intestines. So this one is then an important slide. So first of all, uh, just to explain where the food goes or where it comes from and then eventually where it moves, uh, the, it, everything starts with the beak of the chicken. So first of all, the chicken, its beak does not have any teeth, so they can't actually chew their food, they just pick things and swallow it whole. From the mouth, it goes down the esophagus, same like we have and same like the cow. Down the esophagus it goes and then the first stomach area it gets to is the crop. So this guy, its main function is it stores the food temporarily and also it moistens the food. So after the chicken has eaten, it will also eventually drink water and then the water it drinks will then moisten the food and also help digestion. So I don't really like this picture specifically because it makes the following uh, stomach compartment kind of looks very, very small. But the ventriculus or the proventriculus is the, is the second one after the crop. It can actually it's expand as well, depending on the amount of food on the inside. So right under the label proventriculus, its um, main function is to secrete digestive juices. So this is similar to our stomachs uh, in humans. So there is digestive juices. It does the normal function of any normal stomach. And it's also known as the glandular stomach, specifically because glands are there which secrete the digestive juices. And then the third area that we also consider part of the stomach is known as the gizzard. I just in, um, added here extra bit. It's also known as the ventriculus. So that's kind of tricky because now you've got two words that kind of sound, sound the same. Proventriculus and ventriculus. But a good way to remember it is that pro comes before, so meaning the pro means before the ventriculus. So this proventriculus comes first, then is the middle one, and then we get the ventriculus. V, think of the alphabet, or yeah, C, P, V, V is the last one, or simply it's known as the gizzard. So its main function is it contains stones to grind the food. So even though the chicken doesn't have any teeth, no worries, the last part of its stomach actually has stones. So during the life cycle or the lifetime of the chicken, it eats or picks up uh, pebbles and stones and this lodges inside the gizzard. And then this guy, when it has eaten food that goes into the gizzard, the stones actually grind the food also mechanically into smaller pieces. So this is very similar to ostriches because they're also known to ingest large stones to also help them with digestion. So just just then want to show you the liver and also the gallbladder. So the main function of the liver is it secretes bile to digest fat. So that's the main reason or one of the things that the liver does, but it also helps with digestion. And then the gallbladder actually stores all the bile, this little section. So after the liver has made the bile, it gets stored away in the gallbladder until it's needed. So from the gizzard then goes down the small intestines and the first area we get is the duodenum, then the duodenum and ileum, all part of the small intestine. Then eventually you're going to get to the large intestine and the cecum and the colon. And then from uh, here you actually get, sorry, the cecum is at the back for the chicken. So here's just your colon and then eventually you get to the cecum. And it's very interesting, there are two cecum for the chicken. So this is just like a pouch. It can either, in some pictures, one seeker lies on this side, the other one lies on this side, but point being there should be two for the chicken. So this is unique to the chicken. Pointing it out because it will help you guys in the exam. So the function of the seeker is it enlarges the surface area for absorption specifically. So by the time you get to the seeker area, all the digestion has been done, nothing left, is just absorption. And then everything ends up at the cloaca. They do not have an anus. It's a cloaca because both the liquid and the solids go out of the same area. Then I'd like to show what the pig looks like. Again, this is just a picture to show how everything is packaged in 
well, they don't really have a small body, but you get some miniature pigs, so they have small bodies, and then all those, these things are packaged inside, but this would be an example of a very large pig species. So you've got the intestines, uh, the liver, some fat hiding away over here, we've got the liver here, and then the lungs, and the di diaphragm. So everything, <laughs> there isn't space for anything extra, most probably not. So the one that you guys have to remember is this one. You can ignore for now all the salivary different glands. You don't have to mention the three we get here in the mouth. But it, uh, it starts here at the esophagus. Also the esophagus, it has one stomach. So this is unique to the pig. Only one compartment, nothing extra, nothing special. And then from here, it also has a liver and a gallbladder, just like humans. And then it goes, or if the food is in the stomach, it goes down or through the stomach into the duodenum, part of the small intestine. They also have a yeyenum and a ileum. And then from here, they first have the cica. Let me see how this movement is going out yeah, from the cica. Then they also have the large, yeah, small intestine, sorry, cica, and then large intestine, meaning the colon, and eventually it goes down the rectum and out at the anus. So the pig has the anus. So nothing new really here, similar to humans. So the interesting one was actually the chicken. So this picture is basically what you guys can expect in the exam. First of all, you need to identify it. So the first thing you have to think is pig, because this one only has one stomach compartment. The largest compartment will be the stomach, and A then would be the esophagus. Then you've got the small intestine, and then eventually the large intestine here. And in this case, F would be the cica. And oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention the previous slide. They only have one cecum. So where the chicken had my mouse will come back, it has one, two cica right before um, you get the cloaca. In this case, uh, the pig only has one giant cecum. So we actually find bacteria in the cecum, which also helps with digestion. So the pig has one cecum and only one stomach. Then we go to an example of what you can expect in the exam from a chicken. So here you can immediately see there are two pouches here at the end, right before the digestive tract ends, the cloaca. So this is an example of a chicken, one cecum, two cecum. And then you can see a couple of compartments on this side, one, two, three. And so this must be an example of a chicken. This would be your crop, proventriculus, and your ventriculus or the gizzard area. And this little weird guy would be the pancreas. Okay, then we go to digestion in a bit more detail, specifically for the monogastric animals, the chicken and the pig. So the first step in any digestion is ingestion. So that's where the food goes into the mouth. And also some digestion happens here for the chicken and pig. Whereas in the cow, there was uh, no saliva or amylase in the saliva. In this case, chemical digestion does happen in uh, monogastric animals because their saliva contains enzymes, specifically amylase, which turns the sugars into smaller sugar molecules. And then along with the chemical digestion, the obvious one, especially for the pigs, mechanical digestion, the first bullet, because they chew their food, they at least have teeth. So in this case, the mechanical digestion will skip the chicken because they have no teeth, but then the mechanical digestion will happen in the ventriculus or the gizzard because that's where the stones are. The second thing that happens is digestion in the stomach itself. So I just want to mention here in the picture, the food comes down the esophagus in the form of a bolus. I think I mentioned that for, with the cow video. So what is your bolus? It's your chewed food plus saliva. So then your bolus in a ball shape comes down the esophagus and bloop enters the stomach area where you have the gastric juices. So in the gastric juice, we have hydrochloric acid. So in this case for the pig as well, it has a very, very acidic stomach. As, uh, same thing with humans as well. R is around uh, pH 3. Uh, theirs can be around pH 2 or 3, depends on the species. So then you have water in there as well, obviously, salts, and then very important, mucus, because this protects the stomach lining of, uh, well, the stomach, so that our gastric juices actually does not eat our stomach from the inside out. So mucus is there for protection. And then lastly, there is obviously enzymes on the inside and the gastric juices to help digest certain food types. And the two ones that you guys have to remember is pepsin and renin, the two important enzymes for the monogastric animal, animals. So the pepsin itself 
P, think P for proteins. So it breaks down or hydrolyzes proteins. So hydro hydrolysis means breaking down something with water. So hydrolysis, uh, the pepsin breaks down proteins. Then second to last bullet, the renin itself is known to curdle milk. So just another way of saying it, that the milk is being digested by the enzyme renin. And then lastly, there's also mechanical digestion inside the stomach itself, even in our bodies, because the stomach, the muscle lining of the stomach actually contracts and relaxes and that churns the food. So the whole time the stomach is actually not just lying there, it's actually doing something along with the gastric juices. So our muscles are churning our food in our stomachs. And thirdly, we have digestion in the small intestine. So first of all, the food actually enters, or go, this was part of the stomach, goes through the pyloric sphincter. So the pyloric sphincter is the one close to the small intestine. And again, just on to the topic, the sphincter, what does it do? It actually closes. It's like a small a lever, so to speak. So it can close when you have food in the stomach and only opens when the food has to go into the small intestine. And this is to ensure that no gastric juice actually escapes the stomach and goes where it's not supposed to go. So only the food which is ready when it has been partially digested, di or mostly digested, can enter the small intestine. And then how does it actually enter the small intestine? In the form of chyme. So it's no longer known as a bolus. Now we talk of chyme because it's partially digested food and okay, along with the gastric juices that is still digesting um, all this food. So again, you don't really want all the gastric juices to escape into your small intestine, just those little ones that are already digesting your food. So that's known as chyme. Then also in your uh, duodenum part of the small intestine, especially you find bile. Again, the bile comes from the liver and this emulsifies fats. And emulsify, emulsification actually is a fancy word for saying it digests fat. So every time you hear the word emulsification, think fat. Then also pancreatic juice is from here. As the name implies, it's secreted by the pancreas. So what does it do? It breaks down starch, proteins and as well fats. And the third thing that we also find in the duodenum is the intestinal juices. And the intestinal juice specifically is known as the succus intericus. Very weird Latin word, but you guys have to know it. Um, so meaning you don't have to be able to spell it or anything, but when a taste, when they refer to the succus intericus, just know we find it in the intestine, specifically the small intestine. And it is actually released by the crypts of Libertine that I talked about in the previous video. So in between your villi and the small intestine, uh, in between two villi, they are, there's an area uh, known as the crypt of Libertine, and that secretes the succus intericus. So that is the juice, the intestinal juice we find also here in the small intestine, which is secreted in the small intestine. So again, what does the succus intericus do? It further digests sugar molecules. So you already went from starch to sugar, and from sugar molecules it goes into even smaller molecular structures. And then proteins go into pep or peptide chains, then further, sorry, will be digested to amino acids, and fats will be digested into your glycerol and fatty acids. Then lastly, we have absorption in the small intestine. So again, that's where your villi and microvilli absorb the nutrients in the yeyenum and ileum, and some things do get absorbed in the large intestine. I just mentioned here again, think of the structure of the villi. You have the lacteal right in the middle of every villi that absorbs fat. The blood vessels absorb proteins, sugars, vitamins, and minerals. So yeah, the blood vessels do everything else. Then again, the crypt of Libertine I just explained, and then also uh, these villi really also have the goblet, uh, the goblet, goblet cells, which secretes uh, mucus to also help uh, move along the food and to help better absorption. Then I just want to mention that there are specific accessory glands in the in the body of the uh, monogastric animals. We did talk about the salivary glands or the saliva I mentioned with the amylase on the inside. So there are glands in the mouth area that secretes saliva. And then secondly, we also mentioned the liver, which secretes the bile for fat emulsification. Then the pancreas itself secretes both insulin and pancreatic juices. So the insulin is there to break down sugars or to help store sugars away as fat. 
and the pancreatic juice that also helps with digestion in the small intestine. Then lastly, the intestinal glands I mentioned secrete the succus enterocus. And that is it. And yes, I did give some homework that I will get to you eventually.